The following is a Fight Club presentation. Back in January of last year, Ryan Garcia faced off against his toughest opponent to date, Luke Cool Hand Campbell. And while many thought Ryan would struggle, he instead put in a career best performance, proving he's more than just a social media star. With a vicious left hook to the body, Ryan Garcia made a resounding statement to the boxing world that beyond the gigantic hype around the popular 23-year-old, the undefeated Garcia can actually fight. 2021 should have been a big year for him. Instead, due to a plethora of issues, he ended up not fighting again for the rest of the year. And while many believed we also wouldn't be seeing Garcia anytime soon, he'll be returning in a matter of weeks in a comeback fight against the solid but unknown Emmanuel Tego. Tego hits the jackpot, landing a fight he has desired for nearly two years. The streaking contender from Ghana, who has won 32 in a row since losing his pro debut nearly 18 years ago, was poised to contend for the mandatory slot in the WBO lightweight rankings as he was prepared to enter talks with Garcia in an ordered eliminator in July 2020. The two sides discussed a potential fight only for Garcia to go the WBC route, which led him to his interim title win over Campbell. Tego has fought just once since then, a November 2020 10-round decision over Mason Menard, and the winner of Garcia Tego could be in line for a shot at lineal WBA IBF WBO lightweight king, George Cambosis. After all, Garcia's name has been linked to a rumored three-fight series. Garcia and Cambosis each taking one fight apiece before meeting in a head-on collision later this year, though it has yet to evolve beyond loose chatter. Although it's important to note, Cambosis and Tego are both promoted by Hall of Fame elected Lou DiBella and managed by Peter Kahn. For now, Garcia concentrates on just returning to the ring. And while many will be quick to point out that Tego is 33 years old, unknown, and will be competing in the US for just the second time, Tego is a fighter who hasn't lost for 18 years, and he should give Garcia some much-needed rounds after such a lengthy layoff. Of course, Tego too will be coming off a layoff. In fact, by the time they do fight, Tego would have been out of the ring for nearly 18 months. While Garcia should get the job done, this fight is more about getting back in the ring and finding his rhythm once more after a hectic 12 months, which saw Garcia at one point find himself ready to commit suicide. His issues were bad enough that he withdrew from a scheduled bout with the highly rated Javier Fortuna, announcing that he was doing so in order to deal with mental health issues. It should have been water under the bridge, as Garcia was then scheduled to fight an even better fighter who had just beaten Fortuna in the form of former world champion Joseph Jojo Diaz. But, due to a hand injury, that too was scrapped. Thankfully, he managed to get help, and now he's aiming for a world title shot. And with a new chapter in Garcia's life, it also appears as if Ryan Garcia is heading into his return on April 9th with a clean slate. Well, Joe, uh, like I said, he's old school type of trainer, you know, always drilling the hands of and whatnot. It's really just clean up technique, okay. making sure polish, that polish um, you minimize really, the yeah. mistakes and uh, hopefully 
you know, things go well. It was announced via a release that Garcia will be moving on from Eddie Reynoso and will be working with Hall of Famer Joe Goosen. That change divides opinion. Reynoso has worked with the likes of Canelo Alvarez and Andy Ruiz Jr. and Ryan had fought four times with Reynoso, winning all four bouts by stoppages. And some have even raised eyebrows over the move due to it coming during a time when Canelo and Reynoso have questioned Garcia's commitment to training. At one point, Canelo stated Garcia is wasting time with his talent while not giving 100% to their team. I don't know what happened before and I don't know what he's thinking about it, but he, he said he wants uh, more time, right? I'm not sure, but I really have all the time for all the fighters. You ask Oscar, you ask everybody. If you discipline, you have the time to put in the gym, and train really good. You put discipline, any is always gonna be there. Garcia recently talked positively about working with Reynoso and Canelo, which many thought was a sign that everything was okay between the group. But Goosen, who has worked with Garcia in the past, is one of the more decorated trainers in all of boxing. Based out of Southern California, Goosen is known for working with Gabriel and Rafael Ruelas, as well as Diego Corrales. The well-dressed trainer has been known to work a lot of repetition and drills in his training. While different from Reynoso, Goosen still maintains a strict approach when it comes to his fighters. Fine, but he trained at my gym for you know, quite a while. No, I always knew Ryan Garcia was going to be the next big thing. This fight might not be what the fans wanted. Perhaps Ryan Garcia has also dug himself into a hole with his constant callouts of other fighters like Gervonta Davis and Teofimo Lopez. But Emmanuel is a solid opponent and, in essence, for Garcia to be ready for the big names, he's going to need a tune-up. He's going to need Tego. And on April the 9th, Garcia makes his long-awaited comeback in a fight that should be the restart of something special. But after all the personal issues he's been dealing with, you just never know what Garcia we will be getting. That unknown quantity makes this fight an interesting one. And besides, Garcia is one of the most exciting fighters in the division. So regardless of what happens, this one should be fireworks for as long as it lasts.